Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge and we've got almost a first for me. I will pulled it out of the leather sheath. We've got a leather sheath that's got no clips or anything on it. It's just a pocket dropper leather sheath. Genuine leather sewed up quite well and inside we have an EDC folder and it's a flipper. Great detent, great action. Ball, steel ball bearings in here. Very, very nice. Genuine Damascus blade. Wooden handle scales. <laughs> no pocket clip though. And it's a very cool knife. It has a price point to match. This thing is over 100 Canadian dollars. What is it? Around 80 US dollars, something like that. Uh, that's the regular price. I'm going to see if I can get a sale price or a flash sale or a coupon code for you guys because you deserve just a little break, don't you? I think you do. So we're going to take a good close look at this funky knife that's got some really cool stuff going on in a couple of places and I think you're interested in this knife. So stick around for the full review of this HX Outdoors knife coming at you right now. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a cool knife. It goes in this way and it kind of fits nice and snug, very snug there and you just have that sticking out. I recorded this little bit after I had forgotten to uh, put the leather strap on that came with it. And when the leather strap is on here as a little lanyard, it makes it much easier to take out, much more convenient. Um, you know, you put the knife in the sheath and you store it in your pocket. And then when you want to take it out, it's very easy to take out and use the knife that way. Also that I forgot to show in the video, <laughs> was the box that comes that the knife comes in so there you go it says hx outdoors that's engraved uh, leather engraved into the into the wood and you know nice little foam there and you know it comes in the box and it ships to you like this uh, well the leather straps not tied on it just is in the box and that's how i forgot about it so you get this nice box as well so really nice little touch for a very nice kind of collector style knife. I sharpened it after I had recorded the video and it feels like it's probably a Rockwell of about 58 hardness. You can get a feeling once you've hardened, uh, sharpened, hardened. You can get a feeling for it once you've sharpened an awful lot of knives on how hard the steel is. And this thing is a beautiful cutting knife with how thin that edge is and uh, you know, and it sharpens up very well. You could either, you could have your cell phone in the same pocket if you wanted to, or, you know, almost anything else that you want. And they're going to protect from each other simply by using this leather. And that's a really good thing. Well made, good leather, looks good. Not a bad idea to have that. Now take a look at this. I think that wood is probably a mahogany. I'm not totally sure they don't tell us what it is and they also don't tell us if this is a stainless damascus or if it's a carbon steel damascus they don't tell us any of the steels at all so i'm going to assume that it's a carbon damascus so you're going to want to be careful with this so that you uh don't let it get wet and stay wet and and start to rust on you i'm very fortunate i live in uh, you know central alberta where it's very dry not quite as dry as Arizona, but it is quite dry where we live. We've got a really cool shape for this knife. We've got a blade that, you know, comes up, has a little peak there, a little peak there, and then a peak there, and then it has a drop point down. And there's a swedge that starts up here and it comes all the way across down to that point. So that looks really cool. You can see those shapes as I move the knife back and forth. Uh, hopefully it'll stay focused. Look at that Damascus. It's such a cool looking Damascus. I like that an awful lot. We've got a hollow grind here and uh, we do have a center piece of steel that's a little bit thicker and when I show you the close-up and you can even see it in this picture how you know, that is a dark gray there in the middle. That's your center piece of steel and then you've got a bunch of thin layers on either side. And that's why you can see uh, a fair bit of dark gray here 
and then the uh, cutting edge. That's the blade with the Damascus and stuff. Sharpener's toil, that's kind of odd, isn't it? Look at that sharpener's toil. It looks like they drilled a hole a little bit you know, higher that way than they meant to. You can see the steel comes down a little bit here and then it goes, you know, it goes back a little bit right there. It's kind of odd. Uh, this is the cutting edge from the factory very sharp. Uh, I like that. Not bad at all. I've got some uh, thick webbing here and let's see how well it cuts this stuff. Just zips through it no problem at all. So that's really good. We got uh, some paper here and I can show you how well it cuts that. On a push cut keeping at the same spot very good for the factory edge and um, you know I think it should keep an edge fairly well this is one of those knives where it draws a distinction between some people are going to want to use this knife that's going to be a minority uh, most people who get this knife this is going to be more of a display kind of piece a show piece uh, because it's kind of cool there's a cool factor that I haven't shown you yet uh, let's get to the pivot we've got ball bearings in the pivot and I'll show you the inside of this knife. I'll do that right now. Take a look at the picture of the inside. Pretty cool, you know, standard ball bearings, pivot, really nice. But look at the hole right here. That's a square hole. What's an American to do? Canadians don't have any problem at all with square holes. We call that a Robertson screw. And we've got square screwdrivers coming out of our yin yang that's the most common screw that we have woodworking screws uh, almost all of them have a square hole in it. it the square is awesome screwdrivers hold on to a square hole super well it's easy to screw in deep phillips tend to you know start stripping on you flat is dangerous because they slide out and stuff uh, you know torques and stuff get expensive but a square hole we call that robertson a Robertson guy invented it for us in Canada and that's our main screwdriver but Chinese people didn't know that so what did they do well I'm turning this thing out right over here because that's not a striker of anything that's a screwdriver <laughs> and uh, well, I'm unscrewing that if I can tighten it back up you know, so you've got this wide loop thing here, not super wide, but that you can use that to tighten and loosen your pivot if you need to adjust it. One of the cool factors is that you bring it with you wherever you go. <laughs> so if that comes loose, you can always tighten it up. So that's a really good thing. And it just goes in right there at the back. And the tip of it is a glass breaker. <laughs> kind of cool kind of cool so if you ask me that's one of the cool factors that will get people's attention and get them talking right, tighten that in there and we've got hx outdoors logo right there and then their english logo with the words is right there and then these screws are torx you know it looks like one of those filed space uh backspacers it's kind of rounded Let's see if we get some light in there. Looks really good. I like that backspacer. And they've done a whole bunch of little things like they've recessed this right in here. So the meat of your thumb can sit in there. It makes it very comfortable for extended use. And then there's some jimping up here, but it's just very gentle jimping. We've got, what do we got there? Focus. Just four little jimps <laughs> that your thumb can sit in there. Hangs on really well. Uh, this knife is comfortable in reverse grip. Uh, you don't want to put your thumb across the top too much though, because that's kind of pointy. <laughs> and you know, pinch grip works well. Comfortable knife to actually use and a nice decorative knife to, you know, display. Um, did I go over the measurements? 
uh, in case I didn't go over the measurements, let's do the measurements now. The measurements are uh, the cutting edge and the blade edge are 7.3 centimeters, 2.88 inches. The blade thickness is 3.2 centimeters, that's 0.126 inches. The blade depth right at the peak of this spot to the cutting edge, 2.54 centimeters, one inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.7 millimeters, that's 0.0275 inches so it's a little bit thicker than I'd like it to be but not terrible. The handle length is 10 centimeters and actually I measured it to the end of this square not counting the pointy part there so end of that square to there between my two thumbnails. Uh, handle length 10 centimeters 3.94 inches and then the grip area is just behind the flipper tab to where my thumb is there 8.2 centimeters 3.23 inches. The handle thickness since it's sort of rounded over, I had to find the thickest spot right down the middle. 1.8 centimeters, 0.71 of an inch, but it's not that thick at the edges. So it's actually very, very comfortable on hand. I think people, men with medium sized hands, uh, and even women with medium sized hands, medium women's hands are gonna find this knife quite comfortable. Small hands might be a little bit, the, the knife might be a little bit too big for uh, women's small. The uh, handle depth, oh, I almost missed that. Handle depth is 2.4 centimeters, 0.92 of an inch. And I forgot to get the imperial length on here too, but the metric length is 18 centimeters. So the weight of this knife, 121 grams, 4.25 ounces. You add this little bit of leather and it's 139 grams or 4.9 ounces. How much does this knife cost? Yes, this is where you're gonna want to save some of your shekels first. Oh, check out this detent. Just sucks it in. You can hear it. And it's so smooth. Oh, and it's beautiful. That's why it costs $108.17 US, which is $142.17 Canadian, uh, 90.11 euros or 78.58 pounds sterling. Just the cool factor is a good reason to get this. Fit and finish is really good. Um, really neat that you've got a screwdriver built into the back of the glass breaker thing. Wood handle, Damascus blade. Um, I really like wood. Uh, this pocket protector has got the cool factor as well. Um, the branding, it's not all over the blade. You know, it's nice and small. I like that. Thumb placement here, super comfortable. Excellent detent like I already showed you. Um, even this relief cut on the liner, you know, it's done very clean, very professional. The jimping up here, the lockup is excellent. There's no blade play up and down, back and forth. Blade centering, perfect. Excellent. The only negative I can pick up on this particular knife for me is they don't tell us exactly what the steel is, which I wish they would tell us exactly what it is, what steels they used, and not just say it's Damascus, but what steels did they use to make this Damascus, and that sharpener's choil. That sh sharpener's choil is kind of odd, but it's not so much to stop me from really loving this knife. It's excellent. You know, I will sell it for the right amount of money, but... I'm very happy to keep it too. So uh, thank you so much for watching this, my friends. Uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters for your support. You guys have been awesome. Uh, if you want to become a Patreon supporter, my Patreon supporters get a monthly chance at a free knife. Uh, and I do a draw on one of my mid-priced knives. You know, something around 50 US dollars is what I target. Hopefully I can find something. Sometimes a little bit less, sometimes it's a little bit more. And every month, one of my Patreon supporters gets a free knife through a random draw. And so for $2 a month or more, you can get in on that. Patreon.com slash CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge, and you'll find it. I'll also have everything in the links down below. The purchase links for this from GearBest, which is where I got it. Really, really good supplier to me. They do the best customer service of any of the you know Chinese stores out there. It is still Chinese customer support, but it's the best customer support I've ever received from any Chinese store. And uh, that's saying quite a lot because I've 
done a fair bit of shopping online. And uh, they've always made things right, eventually. You know, so it can be a little frustrating sometimes. Sometimes their shipping's a little bit slow. I don't usually blame them for that, but, you know, I wish they could find faster shipping. I wish they could find it through, like, DHL or FedEx or, you know, ship on some kind of courier. But the very cheap shipping that they have sometimes is slow. But it gets here. And um, so I really like them. Thanks for helping them out. Uh, they supplied this to me to review, so thank you very much, GearBest. I try to do honest, open reviews with integrity. I buy a lot of the knives I review, but I get some of the knives I review as well, uh, either at a discount or given to me. And uh, if you ever wonder which one it is, you can always ask me. I usually try to remember to say in the video, but sometimes I forget, unfortunately. But here's this awesome knife. Thanks for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Remember, friends, to always cut towards your friends or your chum and not your thumb. I don't intend for you to cut your friends. Basically, that saying is cut away from yourself instead of towards yourself. That's what it means. <laughs> In other words, stay safe. <laughs> Bye now.